Hello. Hello. <laughs> Wow, it's been a week already. Yeah. Crazy. <clears throat> yeah. First seventy point three in the books. First seventy point three. Yeah. Have to say I'm a huge, huge fan of the seventy point three distance. Big fan. Let's talk about it. Sure. A little let's, race recap. Yeah, let's go through it. Okay. <laughs> part, hands down the worst part about all of this shit. The race isn't stressful. Even getting on the plane, it's fine. Like once I know it's on the plane, it's good. It's getting it in my fucking bag. And it's because, I don't know, I just have no finesse with bike stuff. Like, you get dirty as fuck and then the parts are coming off and anxiety that I do not need right now. <laughs> Let's hope we could trust it. Ooh, snack stand. You know what I'm getting. We'll be back there. Pretzels. Big, big snack stand. <laughs> and coffee. I wonder if they have a Starbucks here. Big Starbucks fan. Oh, totes. I totally I, do. I finally know how to order my order. It's a vanilla latte with sugar-free vanilla, I think five pumps. Sometimes we add extra espresso. That's only on days that I need it. What size though? Grande. So you do a grande sugar-free vanilla latte. Yeah, I'm still learning on the order that you say things. I know, that's okay. Oh, with coconut milk. I just milk. cut your head off. Because <laughs> I'm allergic. Yes, with coconut milk. I'm allergic to other nuts. No almonds. I'm allergic to other nuts too. Not mine though. <laughs> nope. As far as vlogging um, about our trip, it was probably the night before. Yeah, it was. It was the night before I was having my pre-race meal. Um, and I told you guys the next time I talked to you would be uh, right after the race, which we didn't do a whole lot of video work right after the race. Um, we just enjoyed our time uh, last day or two there in Galveston and then had a big travel day home. Saw some family in Reading. Busy week getting back to work, but we'll we'll get into that whole uh, post week feel. But um, getting back to the race, so we were up bright and early um, Sunday morning. Got up at 3:30 a.m. Uh, to get my first meal in me, which I like to get that in me early, get the stomach moving, and hopefully. Uh, use the bathroom a few times before we make our way down to transition to get set up for the day. Um, it was my normal breakfast, um, toast, banana. Um, honestly, I think I kept it pretty light uh, that morning. I think I made four pieces of toast. I ate three of them. Um, peanut butter, honey, banana, and then I loaded with 2,000 milligrams of sodium. Um, and just had something to drink on and off uh, the whole morning with carbohydrates and electrolytes until the race start. Uh, we made our way down. Uh, we go down, we get the bike all set up, get all my hydration put on, all my nutrition put on. And then Kim uh, saw me off to uh, the swim start, which was in the bay in Galveston. Uh, race morning, it looked like glass which is a huge confidence thing for me coming off of 
Ironman Florida, which uh, they were calling questionably the hardest open water swim in Ironman history. Um, that, that race crushed me. Uh, mentally, physically, I didn't know if I would ever be a confident swimmer again, and I got my chance in Galveston. So, going into my swim, my goal was to, honestly, in my head, I shot my goals really low because the swim is such a hit or miss thing for me. I would, would have been very happy with anything under 40 minutes, and I ended up going 33 minutes and some change, which is incredible for me. That's like a 133, 132 per minute uh, or per yard, per 100 yard pace, which that was my race pace all season in the pool. That's what we did during our full 1.2 swims that we did weeks prior. So I hit exactly uh, where we should have been. And the best part about it was you know, the whole lining up on, on the water, we lined up on the dock, and I didn't really know we would be jumping into the water off the dock, um, complete the swim, come back up onto dry land and make it to transition. So it was a very unique experience. It was, um, I got very, very emotional the minute before uh, the, the gun went off to get in just hearing the national anthem, being in the presence of so many great athletes, it's, you get so scared uh, right before it. And that's that feeling I always tell you guys about that I chase. And I'm finding out that I am chasing fear. And it's because every time I overcome it, I get a fulfillment that is like no other. So. Um, excellent swim, got out of the water, 33 minutes, saw my coach, she was like, hey, you had outstanding swim. And seeing her and hearing her say that, it just, I got super, super aggressive then, where I'm very, I'm usually very careful and hesitant. Um, after I heard that, I was like, this is my day. I am set up for a very, very good day ahead of me, so that's, I carry that through the rest of my day. Uh, got into transition, uh, apparently I passed Kim uh, coming in there, she was yelling my name, telling me all this shit, I didn't hear or see her. I was, after I saw Natasha, I, I think what it was, whoever I would see or hear first, that was the last person I would pay attention to, and it happened to be Natasha first. Um, passed Kim. She said, I look strong. I think I look strong too. Um, got to the bike, uh, felt just like slightly cramping. It's just like your, your legs and your lower back get kind of uh, just, I don't know, kind of tense from being in the water. So I, I had to sit down to put my socks on, but it was like a five minute transition, still kind of slow, but way faster than my 15 minute transition in Florida. Uh, mounted the bike. Got on the bike, visor completely fogged over, couldn't see shit, and it was just the uh, like the air pressure, the condensation. Um, so about four miles in, that finally cleared up and I could see. But as soon as I got on the bike, I felt great, and I started hitting my power and my heart rate marks immediately, which. Our goal was to just follow my heart rate the entire bike ride, and that was to hit that 152 to 157 mark, 157 being the higher end, um, and hold that the entire bike ride. So on the way out, we had a tailwind. I was averaging anywhere from 27 to 30 miles per hour uh, the first 28 miles, which I've never felt that on open road before. It felt amazing. It felt so cool to come up on a pack of 10 or 12 guys and literally slide out to the left of them and pass every single one of them and put them behind me. I did that for an hour and 15 minutes, just literally kept crushing people on the course. And every time I saw someone up ahead, either if that was a quarter mile or a mile ahead, I turned it on. I surged past them, I turned. I got back in front of them, settled in, and found that heart rate again. But 
I've never been more confident on the bike. The bike is now my weapon and it will be what leads to bigger and better races in the future. Um, what I did really well in the first half of the bike was I hit all my hydration marks. Um, I was consuming uh, two 24 ounce bottles per hour, which is what I trained to do. Um, nailed it perfectly on the way out. Uh, we had then had an abrupt U-turn, which then was 28 miles back into a straight on headwind. So we knew this going in, it was going to be this way. We knew we'd be fast going out. We didn't know how slow we'd be back in. Um, but on the way back, I was only averaging about 20, 21, 21 miles per hour, but averaging the same power, the same heart rate, and probably working even harder to surge past um, other competitors. So what I decided, um, I was probably at mile 30 or 32, I was like, I can do one of two things. I can chill right here in this current uh, speed and power and I'm kind of hanging out sitting behind people and just ride this in and save my legs for the run or I can hammer down and hope I can like just hang on for dear life once I got to the run course so I dropped the hammer and there was times I was averaging 275 280 300 plus watts for extended periods of time I felt great I consumed another two bottles on that second half, um, grabbed some more uh, hydration off of the course and ended up finishing the bike in, I think it was like 220 some, um, which I was very, very happy with. Um, hi Luna, you gonna lay down? Good girl. So we came back off the bike, uh, I was about a mile and a half out. I just started to spin my legs, get, getting me mentally and physically ready for the run. Uh, got off the bike, had a very fast uh, transition, T2. And um, I think it was just under... Like three minutes? It was under, yeah, it was like 2.15, I yeah, think, 2.20. Like um, which was awesome. And at this point, I was very warm. It was getting hot. Uh, the sun was beating down, not a cloud in the sky, which I loved. I, I said to you guys, I didn't want to race another cold race like Florida was, so I was in a good position. Um, had everything on me, had, my, had all my hydration, my nutrition, um, started running, felt really, really good. Um, my first mile was 7.09, I remember my watch dinging, looking down, and I'm like, okay, this is perfect, I didn't come out too fast, now it's time to settle into race pace, which goal was a 6.30 to 6.40 uh, pace. Um, I think it was almost immediately after that mile ticked, I started cramping up, and in my quads, really, and last time this happened, Natasha would always remind me, like, we don't run with our quads, we run with our hamstrings and our glutes, light on our feet. So I immediately put my mind there and started focusing on using the back side of my legs and my glutes and my hips to really drive me down course. So my second mile dinged, set in 10, I'm like, okay, I'm still, you know, cruising. And that's when my hamstrings and my glutes started to cramp up, which I've never felt in my life. I've never felt cramps there. It's always been in my quads, always. And um, I knew then that I was in trouble. I knew I was not gonna be able to run the half marathon that I wanted to. I knew I was gonna hold, have to dial things back a little bit and hope that I could maybe catch back up with some sodium and some hydration um, as I got further in the run.
Jason. Texas, sunshine state. <laughs> Now let's just hope all of our bags came. We're known for their mountains here. <laughs> You're so worldly with the states. Well, I was a geography major in college. Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> Made it to Houston. Got a long drive, so. <laughs> Still waiting for my sponsorship. Again, I don't need money or free food. I just want to put your sticker on my tri kit. That's it. <laughs> you love Chipotle. Putting your bike back together. Yeah. <laughs> Everything looks okay. Fuckers in TSA don't put anything back though. I think it's Philly. I think they're a bunch of lazy ball washing bastards. That's what I think. Philly airport blows. <laughs> Where did you find that term at? What, ball washing bastards? Yep. That's a Seth Ferrosi term. Oh. See, I thought that would have been like one of your dad's terms. I mean, it is from something. Because your dad laughed when you said it. Yeah, it's a dad. He did, right? Yeah. Do I look like shit? No. Like shit. I like your hair. Yeah. You look hot. Literally. I <laughs> sweating. <am. I'm> sweating. <laughs> I meant both ways, don't worry. You just cranking on a bike over there. Wrenching. Wrenching. Oh, yeah. Damn it. Such a mechanic. <laughs> I got like a little metal splinter in my Aww. thumb like immediately. I almost had to get my tweezers for him. <clears throat> Looks good. No, so like, come here. So, my biggest worry with the whole travel process, right here. The rear derailleur, this whole thing I have to like take off. And like I package it really, really nice. And I opened it up and they had it completely ripped apart and it was just rolling around in there for Sweet. the entire flight. But I don't know, everything looks pretty good. It's just so nerve wracking until you actually get it out on the road and run it through some gears. But um, it's really cool. Bicycle World is here this weekend. They're from up in Waco. And uh, I'm actually one of their ambassadors and they'll have a tent at. Uh, the NVD and coaching house, so they'll do a whole once over on everything. Um, they have like a pop up shop, so I mean, there's nothing, anything could have broke on this bike, and they would have had a second option for me. So um, it's the only really cool part about being part of a team and having the support crew, because coming to one of these things on your own, it, it's like. If you don't know what you're doing, like it could get, it could get really, really like nerve wracking. Just nerve wracking, and you could freak yourself out to the point that you won't even race. Seriously. But uh, yeah, we're gonna build this up. What time is it? It's like seven o'clock. We hit uh, we hit Chipotle uh, after the airport. Uh, drove here to Galveston. It was about an hour and twenty minutes. Uh, settled into our condo here, which is pretty sweet. I'll do a tour, do a tour video uh, at some point. Um, and then number one priority was grocery shopping, so we did that immediately. Uh, we bought enough for 10 days, we're here for three. <laughs> but, I mean, should we go through a couple options real quick? I'm like, kind of excited. I mean, yeah, if you no, want. No, we'll, we'll circle back. Yeah, we'll that'll be another back. video. We'll but, go over uh, what we got. Yeah, so we're gonna just settle in here tonight. Might go get a bite to eat. Um, and yeah, tomorrow we're going to do a little open water mm -hmm. swimming. Kim's going to be in there with us. Yep. Uh, so we'll get some footy from down there and we'll check back in then. Yep. We do have a nice view though of the golf, which there's like monstrous waves out there actually. We're not swimming. Out. We are not swimming in the golf well, again. Uh, well. Gosh. Not the ocean, yeah. It is beautiful though, can't complain. <clears throat> so, what continued to occur, I would slam some salt, slam two cups of Gatorade on course, 
it would give me enough for my legs to like feel a little bit better. I'd make it another maybe mile to the next aid station and I'd be cramping up like crazy again. This went on and off for 13.1 miles. Um, each, the run course was three loops, about four point something miles each lap. So it was really cool to see everyone multiple times. Um, I ran past Kim and Emily who surprised me out of nowhere. Um, they were at the NVDM coaching tent, which the energy passing them twice per lap was, it was awesome. But the course was laid out in a way that there were so many U-turns. So like you'd hit a straightaway, have an abrupt hairpin U-turn, and then you'd be coming back the other way. And having this stop and go did not help the cramping at all. It actually made things a lot worse. And every time I passed the tent, um, I could hear Coach Cross yelling like, salt, salt, you need salt. And I'm like, I know, I'm, I'm literally dumping uh, these tubes of salt down my throat. Um, trying to take it in in between aid stations with no fluids. My mouth, it was just, it was out of control. Like I couldn't, I could barely breathe. It was so just dry from taking in all the salt. <clears throat> But we ended up, every other mile ended up being like an 8 something, um, then I'd settle back into a 7.30, then it would be like an 8.40, then a 7.45. I went back and forth like that through the entire race and I, uh, I crossed the finish line in 4 hours and 49. 4 hours and 49 minutes, mm -hmm. so well below that five hour mark, not exactly where I wanted it to be. I wanted to see a 430, 435, that was in my head. That's what I was set up to do when I got off the bike. If I would have hit my half marathon like I always do, um, it would have been my race. It would have 100% been my race. Hey you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. What you got there? My favorite bread. I eat this every single, every single day, no matter what. We just woke up and got the snip. I feel like shit. I feel like complete shit today. Uh, I've been having like some, some back issues um, like I thought it was just from swimming, like some lat, some like things about around my uh, my scap, and then my rotator cuff on the left side. Um, but I think we're realizing now that it's more of a hip issue than anything, and I'm gonna contribute that to nothing but not maintenancing myself. Uh, the way I should, not doing as much mobility work the last couple weeks, um, kind of straight away from my weight training, I was swimming a lot more, I've been running on a new treadmill, a ton of variables that my coach definitely would not be too happy about, um, but I mean, it's race weekend, so we can't do anything about it now. All we can do is, um, I mean, Kim stretched out my hips this morning for me, and um, I think another contributing factor is I'm super dehydrated, and that is no other reason than me just letting myself get behind. So, next two days, overhydrate, tons of electrolytes, Lots of mobility work, and hopefully I can get some good rest because I did not sleep last <laughs> night. I think I think I fell asleep maybe at three o'clock, um, and then we were up at six. And it was like one of those delirious like sleep sessions. Like it was awful. But <laughs> I mean, full day of travel, being back home, being away from my schedule, and then usually during taper week two. You, you just don't feel 100%. Like you almost feel like you have like flu-like symptoms. So 
Um, my goal is to best not let this affect my mind. Um, my body can handle it. I've been training under these conditions for months, so just don't want to freak out um, upstairs. And uh, yeah, but anyway, today <clears throat> I just had my coffee. I just had about half uh, 750 milligrams of sodium. Um, I'm gonna have two pieces of Dave's Killer bread and. Um, Probably some other food here as well, but uh, also best peanut butter, Smucker's Natural. Stay away from Jeff, <laughs> bunch of children. Um, Got a whole jar for four days. Yep. We'll do a tour of the, the place and yep. of the food later today. Yep. Um, but this morning we're going to eat and then... We're gonna go pick up Kyle and his girlfriend. Uh, we're gonna go, he found a lake pretty close by that we can do some open water swimming. Um, so we're gonna go do that this morning. Uh, the biggest thing with my swim is I can't go too many days without it because I lose like my feel for the water. So at this point, like I'm not really worried about pacing. I just wanna feel it and It'll probably be good for my body too. For sure. Just to loosen up a little bit. And Kim gets to get in some open water. Mm hmm. I hope there's no sea life in there. It's a lake, so. No sharks in there. No sharks in the lakes. Okay, I think I can deal with that. I didn't bring my buoy either. I mean, my. I don't know what you call it. My flotation device. <laughs> in case I panic. I'll be there. I'm pretty much a lifeguard. <laughs> what else we got today? Uh, Probably go on a little run because we got yeah, in late yesterday. I so. didn't get any training in yesterday. We did watch uh, Moon Knight last night, the first episode. I liked it a lot, Kim, didn't? I actually fell asleep. You didn't know. I actually didn't know that. No, you were, sleep you were laying on my lap. <laughs> Yeah, but every time I looked up, your eyes were open. I know, because I felt you quick looking at me. <laughs> I don't like that. You, you back up so much. It is weird. People like to get in on my face. Oh, I know. You have a cute face. <clears throat> Man, you didn't open any of this stuff for me. Well, I don't use it. <laughs> yep, two pieces of Dave's Killer Bread, peanut butter, a little bit of honey. He's very particular how the honey goes on. Yeah, it has to be like a cool drizzle like you got it at a restaurant. And don't let it touch his edges. Yeah, because if it touches your edges, it gets it on your fingers. Your fingers, fingers get sticky. It's a nightmare. <laughs> um, I'll probably eat something a little... We're going to swim around 9. I'll probably eat a little bit more fruit. Um, yeah, I'll probably eat like a banana or something before we swim. And then... After we swim, I'll eat like a full-on breakfast, like bunch of calories, bunch of carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do we got today? We want to go check out Transition. Team? Is there a team dinner? Uh, yeah, we're going to go to the team house. Um, Natasha and the coach has got a team house this year, which is pretty cool. Uh, Bicycle World will be there. Got my bike checked out. Bike seems okay. I took it for a spin last night. Just seems like it needs a little tune-up, and then it should be fine. Um, and we'll do a little shakeout run, and I think it's BYOF tonight at the team dinner, bring your own food. But really cool to connect with some of my other teammates that are from all over the country, and uh, of all levels too, which is really cool. Some first timers out there, others that are probably going to win their fucking age group this weekend, which is impressive. A uh, bunch of young guys. These young guys, are they're... They're savages. I feel like the old man of the group. I'm not. You're not. I'm not, but I feel that way. <laughs> Sound like my dad. I was gonna ask you, how, 
how do you how did you feel when we were on the sideline telling you like what place you were in because that's something that we were able to see and it moved obviously very quickly yeah so I mean when I got off the bike I think I was in 11th or 12th place mm -hmm. and when I heard that this was before the cramp set in and and then I saw coach cross he was like hey dude he's like go pick them off. He's like, you got work to do. He's like, go pick these guys off. And that's where my mentality was. I was so pumped. I'm like, I've made it to my glory. My run is my strength. And I was ready to push it sub 630 into maybe five something miles if I needed to. And I wanted to see those leaders. I was at the front. So like if I saw those leaders, I know I could chase them down go shoulder to shoulder and then eventually pass them. And it just, uh, it just wasn't my day. And then the second lap, they're like, hey, you're in 16th. And then there was like the third, or end of the second lap, it was like, hey, you're in 18th or 19th. And that's when I knew I wasn't bouncing back. So all I kept thinking, I was like, I need to hold off as many people as I can and try to keep a really, I don't know, a really good finish for myself, something mm -hmm. I'd be proud of. And that's that's all I could do at that point. How does it how did it feel like when you went like across the finish line, knowing that it wasn't a ten plus hour day? It was less than five hours. Like, do you even recall what just happened? <laughs> no, I mean, just like my other races, <clears throat> you get into this weird flow state where you don't think about the time, you don't think about. You don't think about the pain, you just hit your marks. Like I had, I had different cues and process goals all day that I wanted to hit. And each part of the race, I hit them. I hit my swim, I hit my transition, I nailed my nutrition and hydration on the bike. I mean, at least that's what we thought. You know, so I, I nailed all these things. I, I wasn't thinking about anything but racing. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were really trying to accomplish this year is gaining more race experience so things start to become just instinct. So if I feel a certain way, I make an adjustment. If I'm feeling very good, I go faster. If I have to dial it back, I dial it back. Um, everything felt like second nature to me and that's, that's the goal. That is what I'm most proud of. We've made progress there. So my next race, I should be even more aggressive um, on course. And the other thing I thought was really cool when you crossed the finish line is there were so many people that you knew at the end. That's something that you haven't really experienced either with these races, so. Yeah, I mean, it's so cool. I mean, I know we have a huge following with Axe and Sledge and uh, the HWMF podcast and, you know, the the support everyone gives me on Instagram is outstanding. But then to finally feel it and see it on course, like especially at an Ironman, it's such a niche, um, it's such a niche event. I didn't know anything about them till Kenny introduced them to me. So to be racing side by side with people that knew who I was, knew my journey to get there, um, even me finishing ahead of some of them that have been doing this for 10 years, it it just felt really good. Um, it just felt really good to feel mm -hmm. that. You know, being someone that's always been kind of on the sidelines and never part of team sports, um, man, it just it feels good. That's it, plain and simple. But um, a couple things made me laugh. Um, someone on the bike knew it was me by the mustache. Um, and then complimented on how cool my bike was. Um, another guy, right when we finished, he, he was like, hey, he's like, I know you. And I'm like, I was like, I have no idea who you are. And he's like, I don't know your name though. He's like, I think you're like, you're on YouTube. I was like, yeah, I was like, I am on YouTube. And he's like, I just don't know your name. So <laughs> it was funny he recognized me. Um, and then another guy, he was like, hey, you're the Porsche guy. And I'm like, <laughs> of all things you could think of me as, like, you know, either the dude that lost all the weight, the dude that runs Iron Man, the guy from the HWMF podcast, this guy said, hey, you're the Porsche guy. I'm like, man, that's the coolest thing anyone's ever said about me. Uh, so that, that was cool. That, 
those things make it worth it. You know, it's I, I'd still be doing this without you know hearing that and feeling those things, but. I mean, who doesn't like to get recognized for, for doing something big? I think that's, I think that's cool. Mm -hmm. Now, you did briefly mention, um, like, you hit your goals. You hit your swim goal, your bike goal, and things such as that. So what were you most happy about that day? Yeah, so, I mean, I think I was most pleased with, with my bike performance. I mean, I am very, very strong on the bike. I... I think I can compete with the top five guys. I really do. And we just need to make some adjustments. Like, I guess this is what I'm most proud of. Nothing out of my fitness or my training was the problem on course. My training was there. My endurance was there. My fitness was there. I nailed all my stuff. The only thing that was off was my nutrition. So looking back on the whole day, that would have been a 4.30, without a doubt in my mind, if not faster, if I would have nailed my nutrition, which I did based on what we've been doing. Um, I guess I'll circle back to this right now. We did another sweat test two weeks before my race. We got the results back about four or five days before the race, and it was basically saying I was losing 5,000 milligrams of sodium per hour, which is insane. I thought the test was wrong. Natasha kind of like pushed it to the side and was like, hey, we'll revisit this after the race. Like, let's stick to the plan. Stick to what you've been doing in training because it's been working very well. Um, we just never gotten to the point of riding 56 miles and then, you know, coming off of that really, really hard right into a full 13 miles, right? So looking back, I need, I was probably intaking around 2,000 milligrams per hour on the bike. I need three to 4,000, which sounds insane, but it's what I need. You should get off the bike feeling 100% for the run. You should be fueled, you should be energized, you shouldn't feel a cramp in your body. And then during the run, you should just supplement by feel, a little bit of salt, a little bit of hydration, a little bit of carbohydrates as needed. You shouldn't need it. The bike should set you up for a big performance on the run. That's where I failed. But I'm glad it was something like that instead of me being a pussy out there and not trusting my fitness. I trusted my fitness. I laid the hammer down. I'm damn proud of that. And I know before race day, we had a few conversations about like oh, having your bike workouts that you do in the garage and translating that onto the road. Do you think that's exactly what you did? Yeah, I mean, the, the numbers don't weren't the same, like my miles per hour. The, the way we train is not like a race day condition. You have race day intervals, but then you usually have some rest in there. Yes, I have ridden greater than 56 miles multiple training sessions, but it was never in record time. It was always around 20, 21 miles per hour. So... I had to trust the process and trust my coach that putting my body under the, this strain for months on end, then tapering into the race, letting your body fully, fully recover, you should be able to extend those 15, 20, 30 minute race intervals over the duration of the race. And, and that's what we did. Everything I did in practice and did in training translated better on course. Mm -hmm. The run would have translated the best if I would have nailed my nutrition. So aside from um, obviously the sweat test and the nutrition, is there anything else that you can think of that you could have done better that day? Um, it's hard to say. I think I could have swam harder. I think I was still conservative, but my process goal for the swim was smooth is fast that's just how it's been for me 
So like a smoother stroke, not so fast of a turnover, um, has always resulted in me being faster in the water. So I wish I would have maybe swam a little faster, but who knows, that could have slowed my time down. Um, and I wish I would have done better in T1. I, I think what happens is like you kind of lose track of time between getting out of the water and getting all your stuff on the bike. And you end up like not like, I don't know, you just get disconnected with time. So I want to try to be more alert in T1 next time. Um, I'm not pulling back on the bike, I can tell you that right now. That's my new bike standard and I just need to be more prepared for that run. So that means longer runoffs in, in the months to come. Excuse me, is that a banana in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> Look, I told you. Sunshine State. If only we were in Florida. We are. This is uh, Western Florida, also known as Eastern Texas. Not really a fan of this car. Ford makes a way better extension. Sure does. I agree. Where are we going? We're going to swim in a lake. Ooh, fun, fun. So days after your first 70.3, how was, how were the feelings? How'd you feel? Uh, what was men going on? <laughs> Mentally, I was great. I was on cloud nine. It, it felt awesome. Finished 26th in my age group. I think 120 something overall. I mean, it felt outstanding. Uh, my body, on the other hand, it did not feel good. It felt worse than I did after a 140.6. And I think the main reason, it just being my body was cramping for so long, for about an hour and 40 minutes, like your, your muscle fibers are just tearing nonstop. And I just think I had a ton of recovery and repair to do. And it was something I just never experienced before. I couldn't, I couldn't straighten my legs, I couldn't bend my legs because it was either pulling on my quad or my hamstring. Um, I couldn't walk up or down steps. Kim carried all my shit for the first two days. Um, and then going through the airport was awful, like really, really bad. Um, the whole travel day home was exhausting. It was just... It was very mentally tough to feel so broken and out of shape after what just occurred. Um, but it also reassured me that I did not leave anything left, like nothing. And I'll never forget the last 
one and a half miles, I saw my coach, and she's, I think everyone saw the look on my face. Everyone knew how bad I was hurting. And she looked at me, and I looked her straight in the eyes, and she said, this is supposed to hurt. This is not supposed to be easy. Finish it out. And, and that's what I did. That's what I did. I pushed through it. I, I somehow had this like burst of energy um, looking at me coming down the chute to the red carpet when Kim filmed me. Um, I was like hobbling side to side. Like my one leg was not operating at all. But in my head, I was, had perfect running form. Like I just, I didn't even know. My body was just dragging my ass across that line. Um, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen you that like down before, hurt. No, I, I've, never, I've never been that hurt before. Yeah. That just everything did, and it was days. And as we started adding, the, the couple days of, of traveling really fucked it up even more. A uh, couple hours on flights, rushing around with heavy bags, time in the car, then we spent time in Reading, then we had another four hour drive back to Pittsburgh. And until I got like a recovery swim and then like another spin out on the bike in, excuse me, it was just nothing felt good. But the best thing is to get your body moving, uh, get tons of food in me. I, I ate a ton every day after the race and not all shit. It really wasn't just I increased my protein um, and just did not. I did not worry about calorie intake. I just, if I was hungry, I ate. And I mean, that's all you can really do. Um, it is now Sunday the 10th and I ran eight miles in 60 minutes this morning. My body is back. You know, one week post, I followed my coach's protocol to recover. I fueled myself accordingly. And we're about to get into my heaviest week of training. Uh, we've ever done to date a week post race. So going into my next question, what races are next now? What are we looking at in the future? Yeah, so I'd be lying if like literally the day after the race I didn't start looking if I can add something between now and um, I have Ohio 70.3 July 24th, which is a long time away. It's 15 weeks and that's about the amount of time I've been training since Florida, really, or since Christmas time. So to think about what we can accomplish in 15 weeks is crazy, but the fitness isn't going to compound as quickly as it did before. Once you get to a certain fitness level, like you're not gonna just keep chipping minutes off your time, you're gonna chip seconds, right? So our goal is to still race more and Natasha's first question was, can you, can you afford to race more right now? Like time-wise, she knows how busy we are with work. Um, and we looked at a couple things. I locked in um, the Pittsburgh Half Marathon. That is May 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm gonna do that, hopefully PR that course. Um, then I also signed up for Cap Tex, which is an Olympic distance triathlon in Austin. That is on Memorial Day, so it's going to be like a really intense trip for me. I'm going by myself, flying down on a Saturday, race Monday, come home Monday night. Um, but it's a super, super competitive uh, triathlon in Texas. So like I'll be racing some really fast dudes, and I've never done an Olympic before. So I think it will just give me more race experience and then another phenomenal uh, weekend of training because of it. Um, then I got Ohio 70.3 that me and Kim uh, will be conquering together. Uh, that is July 24th, Sandusky, Ohio. Then I have uh, PTO US Open in Dallas, Texas. That will be in September. Um, unless I qualify for Worlds, in July, then I'll be doing uh, St. George in October. We'll see. And then we will end the race season uh, the weekend before Thanksgiving. I'll be doing Ironman Arizona, um, which just looks like an amazing race altogether. 
I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about the 140.6s anymore after running a 70.3, the time goes like that. Um, but I mean, I, I should be in crazy, crazy shape by the end of the year. So I'm gonna see what we can do. All right, any uh, new goals for these next coming races? Yeah, new goals. I have quite a few. Um, I mean, first and foremost is to nail down my new nutrition. Got to figure that out because that's a lot of salt to take in in a very short period of time. I need to figure out the best way to do that. Um, I plan to write it out in three different ways. One, mostly just drinking the sodium in all my bottles. Another one where I'll be supplementing it with uh, base salts. And then another one that will be kind of a combination of both. So I'm going to see, I'm going to try all three, see what works best. Um, the main issues with that is uh, GI distress, and that's what I want to avoid. That once you have stomach issues, it's really hard to com like combat that with, with anything. So that's my number one goal. Number two, get way faster in the water. And we're going to do so by swimming more. Um, I'm going to have Emily. Uh, pretty much coach me like a swimmer instead of just like a triathlete and that just means more volume more reps like a swimmer just a whole different mentality with it like treating it as its own sport and not just a segment of triathlon and then uh, build huge power on the bike I think I can still build a lot on there and I want to push Lionel Sanders watts on the bike I do and I think I can. I averaged about 240 watts at this current race. I think I can average 300. So that's that's my new goal. I want to average 300 watts for two hours. That's what I want to do. And then my run's there. My run will keep improving. Um, again, just going to nail that nutrition on the bike to set up that run. I do not want what happened this past race to happen again my race can be won on the run if I nail it, so, yep. Any other closing thoughts? Where do we go from here? Yeah, I mean, my only thoughts is I, I, I love this more than I ever have. It, I'm super passionate about it. You know, it's, this is not easy. It, it's extremely time consuming. It's very selfish. It's very trying on relationships. Um, and I'd say before this race, me and Kim had multiple conversations about how this has been impacting our relationship together and like, like a ton of negative. And what we both kind of, I think, now come to the conclusion, especially with Kim being at this race and seeing some very top competitors you know, fight for like big positions on course and seeing the camaraderie of a team. I think we both realize that this is our life now. Our life is triathlon. Our life is Axe and Sledge supplements. And that's it. We don't make time for anything else. We don't have downtime. We don't take vacations. We don't... Um, say fuck it this weekend we're going to go out drinking and have like no that's not us anymore so what we need to do is we need to be more present with each other when we're training when we are when we do have time together i need to be a hundred percent more present with work because it is what allows me to do what i'm doing today triathlon is not a cheap sport by any means it's very expensive um so we're just going to keep hammering it together and my goal from now until Ohio is to really help support Kim the way she has me through all these races because it is not easy on your own. You really need to lean into someone on those days that you're just exhausted from training and questioning yourself and you get so anxious on how to fit in training. And I, I want to be there. I want to try to do a better job of being there for her the way she's been there for me. Um, and then the, the only other thing is um, 
I'm learning very quickly, uh, just based on my program for the next two weeks, my training is being ramped up yet again. You know, where I was averaging 18, 19, 20 hours a week the last three months, it's, it's turning into 25 to 30 hour weeks. I mean, that's, that's a typical, that's a little shy of a typical work week for people. And I don't have a typical work week. You know, working 50 plus, 50, 60 plus hours a week, also training for 25 or 30 hours a week. I mean, every day is, is down to the minute. Um, I, w I don't know, I wouldn't have it any other way. Some people think it's fucking crazy. They, they question why I do this. My family has no idea why I do this, I don't think. And I, I don't think, unless you've been in this sport, you don't know what it's like either. Um, all I know is I'm very passionate and I like inspiring you guys, whether that's in triathlon or just your jobs or your other things you guys like to compete in. I just want to keep making a positive influence on you, you guys, myself, my wife, my friends, my family, my business. I just want to keep, I don't want any of this to ever be negative anymore. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to train my ass off and hopefully take you guys along for the ride. And we close out the middle to end of this year with some really, really cool shit. Another race. Another Iron Man Village. <laughs> Buy some more stuff. Yeah. <laughs>
tuned up, tune her up. So we just got back uh, from the NVDM coaching house, got my bike tuned up, and uh, got my race chain put on. I'll show you the guys the bike when we get back to the room. It's pretty badass. Got a lot of compliments on the color. It's chameleon orange. Barely see me coming. Circle K, like what a unique, uh, Shut up. what a unique gas station name, I Circle thought. Circle K, yeah. You look like such a diva driving this. I hate this vehicle. It's, it's a bad one. Does not like the vehicle. Oh, here, good news. I was talking to Kyle earlier, my good friend, uh, and I told him that uh, we're probably selling Kim's Porsche. Oh, no. This uh, is no. This because is she loves driving the Expedition, right? So he's like, hey, here's a better idea. Not sure if you thought of this or not. Look, Walmart's right here. I see the trucks. Oh, fuck. Well, it didn't tell me to turn. <clears throat> anyway, back to what we were talking about. He's like, why don't you trade her Porsche in for another Porsche? This is a bad idea. We're not I mean, we already have a bunch of equity in hers. It's basically getting a portion of the next Porsche for free. You know what they say? Uh, I don't know what they say about you. You, there's no explanation for your behavior. Half the time. You know what they say? Shit, there's a there's a saying about like one like a bird in the hand and one in the bush or something like that. Hand, are you in? <laughs> I don't know. That wasn't a good uh, analogy for this, but I do think we're onto something. She didn't say no. She was kind of like laughing about it, like, oh, you're so silly, go buy another one. I'm really going the long route here. Bring it around town. Cool. Well, Anyways, we're going to go pick up yeah. pizza pies. No more Porsches. <clears throat> yeah, bye. And that. No more Porsches. <clears throat> Matt, use that whole clip, except for the part that she said, don't buy the Porsches. <laughs> but put this in because it's funny. <laughs> Tons of seagulls down here. I think I'm gonna take one home. Name it Steven. Aww. Steven Seagull. It's a goal. We just had this conversation. I know, but the internet didn't hear it. That was fucking funny. Home and pharmacy, yep. Let's turn into this guy. Ah, <laughs> oh, Speedy Gonzalez here. Oh, that was mean. We're parking in the back. Parker in the back. So we can do weed back here. Yeah, let's oh. do weed. Do weed and sex. Whoa, <laughs> little sex. Walmart, we're going to Walmart. We're going to Walmart Wally, just for Wally, one. Wally World, Wally World, Wally World. Walmart, for Walmart, ruler. Walmart, Walmart. <laughs> she loves when I do that. Oh, we should buy a kayak here. Go fly that shit home? Yeah, I flew home with a bike. You can also fly home with a yak. Oh, this guy's letting us go. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Oh, why thank you. Alright, Bobby just went in to get pizza, but I just have to say, this man is driving me crazy. Very forgetful, very sensitive, high anxiety. Yeah, my patients are wearing. But he looks really cute though. Hold on. He's he's trying to peek. Pizza, pizza! Uh, Hi, my love. Man, I thought I, I thought it was. Uh, I didn't think I was gonna be able to pick them up. Oh, why? Well, the sign says we speak very little English, but we make the best pizza, and I don't even speak French. You know. <sighs> oh, hey guys! Come on in. Just me here. And Kim behind the camera. <laughs> anyway, wanted to do a quick tour of the condo. Hmm. Uh, this right here, this is uh, the first living room. Hmm. We do living room stuff in here. This is uh, a lot of stuff in here. This is a three person couch, a one person chair, and then another one person chair behind you. 
old this bike is stuff. Where we put shoes. <laughs> really good uh, siete chips. Mm. Big fan of these. Good chips. All right, let's keep this rolling. This is the balcony. Balcony is actually French for outdoor. There's someone on a bike. Look, I'm gonna beat his ass on Sunday. <laughs> anyway, we got the, the, the wetsuits getting on wet. In this cold, windy weather. <laughs> All right, now we're back in. This is the living room. All right, this is one of my favorite rooms of the house. This is the bedroom. Do two things in here. I'll let you figure those out. Well, Definitely. Sleep, sleeping and sex, but just sex for me this weekend. It's all about Bob. No sex for Kim, just me. It's always about Bob. And we don't sleep with the top blanket because God knows if that ever gets washed. Yeah, and that's, good rule of thumb. It's kind of gross. Don't sleep with the top blanket in uh, places you don't know. Yeah. Crabs. Right, cool. Might get crabs. We are at the beach. All right, here is our giant walk-in closet. Assortments of stuff, yep, we can both walk in here. You can. Really good socks. Expensive, but really good. Yeah, but if you use Endure socks and you use uh, Kim D15. That's just a shameless plug. 15% off, just saying. All right, we're gonna keep this going. Yeah. This is uh, the lavatory, also known as a bathroom. A uh, bunch of essentials here. Shower. We shower in there. We do. Cool. All right. So this is the other kit, uh, other living room. Uh, we got a room with two living rooms, just in case we wanted to be apart from each other. Um, I'm kidding. This is the same one. <laughs> no. Yeah. Wow. It looks exactly <clears throat> like it. All right. This is the kitchenette. <laughs> it's kind of like a dining room meets kitchen. Here, <laughs> these are stale cookies. They're still good. M&Ms in them? Yeah, they're non-name brand M&Ms. Those are always your go-to. Okay. All right. Here's a bunch of race day nutrition. Gels, more gels, some more gels, salts, a bunch of bottles, more batteries for the camera that you're watching this on. A lot of axe and sludge stuff. Yep. yep. And then, uh, let's see. This is the $369 worth of food. Bunch of fresh fruits. Oh yeah. Uh, more bread than we need. Two things of coconut milk that we didn't open yet, and we only have one and a half more days here. Uh, this shit, really, really good. Good. Orange juice. Orange juice, I'm gonna drink all of this. The tomorrow. best salad dressing. Yeah, it is good. Yep. All right. There's nothing in the freezer. <laughs> Actually, there is. Oh, I did get you chocolate. Bobby's the, favorite. Listen, if you get the mini ones, it's free calories, they don't count. Uh, this is the snack cabinet. It's a little bare at the moment, but we have plenty of fig bars. Uh, lots, Nature's Bakery, still waiting for my sponsorship. Um, if you guys could hit him up. Bobby's then, favorite uh, granola. Blueberry weed. And we had to find some white rice. Pretzels, and then more really good chips by Siete. All right, and then here is dinner. We just went to Mario's, the place that only speaks very little English. Uh, let's go in here first. That is the New Yorker calzone. I expected a little side of marinara, I'm not gonna lie. Might be a deal breaker. Definitely hitting up Yelp on that one. Also a very generic looking pizza. Um, Let's feel the crust on her. Check the undercarriage. Pretty good undercarriage. Is there a flop? I think it might be a sweet sauce, but that's just an assumption. Not a huge fan of sweet sauces mm -hmm. either. But that's the tour. Uh, real quick, I can never show you guys my bike. 
you always ask. So here's a quick once over. This is the Cervelo P9. I think it's a 2020. This is my second year racing on it. Um, up front I got the profile design, hydration system, 51 speed shop bars. Uh, up front I got a Zip 404. In the rear, Zip Super 9. Both running Continental uh, GP5000. Yes, they are tubeless and tubeless ready. Also, ceramic speed, oversized pulley. Also have a ceramic speed bottom bracket. Um, and then a coated uh, race chain for tomorrow. Favero uh, power meter pedals. So these will connect to my bike GPS, tell me my power throughout the day. And also here is my Garmin GPS, gets mounted right here. I will also have two bottles on the back here, another bottle on the frame, and then as I run out of fluids here, you just pop the bottle right in here, drain it into there, and then I can drink from this straw throughout the entire race. So now this stuff is not cheap. It is expensive to get into, but there is plenty of entry level uh, bikes and components that anyone can get. Um, if you guys are interested in upgrading your bike or upgrading your components or accessories, you can save some money by uh, shopping with Bicycle World website is visit bicycleworld.com and you can use code Bobby that will save you some money um, and the customer service is outstanding so Bicycle World thank you for all the support for getting me ready for this race alright I'm pretty hungry I'm gonna tear up some food we are currently wow one day and a few hours out mm -hmm. from race morning so let's go I gotta say, it feels good to like recap this because like I can kind of move on from this now in, in my head. A lot of like post race, I get like super, super depressed. Like you, you have this huge build up to this big time event. I think it goes to like, you, you hear it a lot with the Olympics. A lot of these athletes train for four years for 30 seconds, right? And it's like super depressing when it's over, whether you took gold or not. Um, it's it, like it happens, people move on and like you forget about it. But um, I think I did a really good job this time around at reflecting and enjoying uh, celebrating it. Um, I think a lot of times we move so fast in life that we don't celebrate these wins. And I think we really did this week. I know I didn't do it so much on the outside or like telling people about it, but I did it internally. I reflected every single morning I woke up um, and just thank God that I'm able to do this. And yeah, yeah, I think that's where we're at. So guys, thank you. Thank you again for always supporting me in everything we do. Thank you for watching these videos. I'm sorry I don't put out more. Um, it's just, it's so challenging, but we'll continue to try to get better at this over the, the next big block that we're prepping for. And I can't wait to show you guys uh, what we're going to do next time. So God bless you. I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome rest of your day. We'll talk soon. Ready for bike ride? Yes, ma'am. It's Saturday, day before the race. Me and Kyle are going to spin for like 20, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure the bike is good. Um, I also haven't been outside in a month on the bike. Yeah. Don't tell Natasha. <laughs> she knows. I'm from I, fucking I, I Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, but yeah, just basically making sure everything feels good. We got everything dialed in at uh, the NVDM house last night. So make sure my power meter hooks up. Make sure my GPS is good. My heart rate monitor. Um, I put new cleats on my shoes. So make sure those are good. Um, new bike helmet, so make sure that just 
you know, it's feeling good. Cool. You want to see it? It's pretty cool. I usually just rock all black. I, I don't know. It's just been my thing, but this matches most of my Porsches, so <laughs> that's why I got the white. Looks pretty cool, though. Um, but yeah, we're going to spit it out for a bit and then uh, do a quick run off the bike. Just feel like a little bit of a race pace. It's been a couple days, so um, probably 15, 20 minutes, nothing crazy, and then I have no other obligations today but to eat, rest, uh, check in my bike at 2 or 3 p.m. Basically, we'll take it up to transition again, uh, drop the bike off, and then everything is there except my nutrition, uh, my hydration, and then my race morning stuff will take down with us uh, race morning. So, okay. yeah, should be a good day. Cool. So, big breakfast for Bob. Um, he did a bike ride, little runoff. So, we're doing Dave's killer bagel and everything bagel, um, three whole eggs, and then we're going to do half a cup of egg whites, um, sprinkle a little bit of cheese in it, and then he'll probably do some other side of fresh fruit. Um, sometimes he'll do oatmeal, but mostly is fruit on the side when he does a big egg breakfast like this. Um, we got to try to time meals well today just because before race day, we don't want to eat a later dinner. He wants to give his belly some time to digest all of his food because typically we'll wake up about 3 a.m. He has to eat his um, pre-race meal. So just spreading that time out making sure that he has time to digest everything, go to the bathroom, um, and just so he doesn't feel too bloated as well. So it is nine o'clock, this is his second meal of the day, big egg meal, and then we'll have lunch a few hours later and then an early dinner. Post-workout breakfast. You love food. <laughs> Six two one. Good number. Everything laid out, ready to go. Snack bags for the bike, for the run. Should we show my race day kit? Yep, let's show the race kit. Boom. Awesome. Get the show on the road.
race, the day before race, din dins. What do we have? Um, filet mm -hmm. and uh, sweet potato fries. Mm. Super, like super simple. Yeah. Um, not overcomplicating it. I had you know my pizza and stuff last night, but night before the race, nothing foreign goes in my stomach. Um, and just, this is usually a meal that we would do on a Friday or Saturday night back home before a big workout. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, red meat, it's just packed with nutrients and vitamins. Uh, same with the complex carbohydrates. Um, just feel good foods, right? High energy foods. They're gonna stick with me. Um, I usually, like before Ironman Florida, I did chicken and rice, which is fine. Um, I just noticed like it didn't stay with me real long. I felt like I had an empty stomach halfway through my race. So hopefully this just adds, you know, that extra energy for me. And, you know, it, it always gets risky with eating out around races. So the day before, like we didn't eat anything outside of what was cooked in this kitchen. And that's just to eliminate any kind of issues with like food poisoning, undercooked food, or just processed things that might kind of fuck you up so uh yeah bike is checked in it's the last big meal of the day i'll probably have some snacks still here later tonight um we have a 3 a.m wake up uh gotta be at transition by 5 a.m so i'm gonna try to sleep as much as i can tonight uh it, it won't be much but last night i did get eight hours of sleep and that's all I really need. That was enough sleep for me for two days. <laughs> so right now, just trying to keep stress low, anxiety low, stay off my feet, and mentally prepare and visualize tomorrow because there's, it's very intense on the morning and uh, for many of you that know me and know my personality, uh, I'm always stressed and always have high anxiety to begin with, but the moment that gun goes off and I can get in that water, anxiety is behind me the entire day. And I think that is why I like racing and why I like doing this. It's like I'm outrunning my mental, my mental instabilities that I battle every day. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna throw down tomorrow. Uh, Kim's gonna be documenting some of my day and uh, hopefully the next time I speak to you guys, <laughs> I'm recapping a hell of a race. to get a Starbucks coffee while Bobby's in the water. <laughs> and those pastries look good.
Bob. <laughs> Just testing the legs, see if I could have got another point one out of one. Get, 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 get. Oh, yes. Road sodas. Hop, hop in the Pacifica, Bob. Hey, where are you going? Um, I thought the bike course was a little short yesterday, so I figured I'd get a little bit more in today. <laughs> are you awake? <laughs> uh, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> you better be careful out there. No, it's uh, it's good to get my legs flushed out the day after the race, and um, who knows when we'll be riding outside next in Pittsburgh. So I figured one last little spin uh, before we travel out later today. Good idea. Yep. Proud of you. When I come back, maybe we'll do a little recap. Okay. Alright. Have fun. Yep. Be careful. Yep. <laughs> a little rough? Well, if that's not beautiful. <laughs> Are you excited for breakfast? Yeah. 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 Gonna get like one of everything? Cool. Yeah, I'm hoping like there's like a big like an Iron Man breakfast. Big, yeah, big <laughs> breakfast. Like, I definitely want a waffle. I mean, I just want to eat like John Couch right now. Yeah, I mean you deserve everything on the menu, so let's get it. <laughs> All right, my cute little plate of breakfast and. <laughs> We got, got go ahead, tell us. Three egg omelet with uh, bacon, peppers, and cheddar, potatoes, jalapeno cheddar bread, uh, three chocolate chip pancakes. These look really good. And I'm probably going to have some of Kim's bacon. What? I mean, I think so. Looks yummy. Time to recover. <laughs> Hey, old man. Hey, hello. Hurting a little, huh? Yes. How was your brekkie? That was really good. I'm yeah. really full, though. <laughs> I 
That's okay. I feel good. You look good. Just like planting my feet and descending stairs. Yeah. That's where it gets a little rough. <laughs> we got a couple stairs up here. You gotta gotta make your way up. Bobby trying to put on socks. Seventy point three post race problems. Oh, my leg. He's probably gonna cramp. Fuck. Fuck. He might get a toe cramp. Do you need me to help you? Nope. Got him. <laughs> you might you need help with that one? Ooh. Hammy cramp. Okay, hold on. It's okay. It's okay. I got it. Help is on the way. <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire. Everyone knew that reference. How do you know? They might not watch Mrs. Doubtfire like I do. Accomplished. Wow, you're a stud. Where are we going tonight? Steak 48. <gasps> Are you taking me on a date? Or yourself on a date? <laughs> it's, not, it's not really a date. Celebration? Yeah, it's more of a celebration of, uh, for me. Your hair looks good. I didn't even do it yet. Wow, it looks so nice. Thanks, I didn't even, I didn't even do anything to it I think you have yet. to do anything to it. It looks I, great. I do have to do a little bit oh, to it. <sighs> little hair gel. It's amazing you can feel out of shape. Like after running 70 miles. Mm. So, um, we're actually in Houston, right? Yeah. <laughs> we um, got a hotel right by the airport because we would have had to wake up at like 1.30 in the morning, drive probably like an hour and a half to the airport, drop the rental off, and then get on the plane. So. We drove to the airport tonight, got a hotel, we're gonna go to dinner, and we can just kind of roll out of bed and go to the airport. Much easier. Right? Yeah, thank you for that recap. You're very welcome, in case you forgot what we did. I tell Bobby to hurry up and walk. <laughs> this is bullshit. That's a difficult task, after a 70.3 though. He has an excuse. You still look good. Get out of here. <laughs>